Calorimetry is the science of measuring heat. And during a chemical reaction, there's always going to be some sort of transfer of energy. Either energy is going into the chemical reaction or energy is coming out of the chemical reaction. To measure this energy is heat, and we only need really simple devices to measure heat, like this thermometer. Now, temperature and heat are not the same thing. If there is heat, then temperature will change. However, there's more to calculating heat than just the change in temperature. We need a little bit of special equipment. The special equipment that we use to measure heat is called a calorimeter, and I happen to have one right here. Now, it looks like just two styrofoam cups, but this is actually a scientific device. We're going to use this to do an experiment here in a minute. But first, let's talk about what we're going to learn in this video. First, we're going to learn about the different types of calorimeters, and then we're going to learn about the equations that we use to calculate the amount of heat transferred during a chemical reaction. And then we're going to perform an experiment in our coffee cup calorimeter and actually calculate the heat transferred during that chemical reaction. So first, the two different types of calorimeters. The first one's called a constant pressure calorimeter. It's also known as a coffee cup calorimeter because we just need some sort of insulated container and styrofoam cups work really, really well. And then the other type is called a constant volume calorimeter, also known as a bomb calorimeter, although it doesn't really have anything to do with an actual bomb. Let's start with the constant pressure calorimeter. Now they're called constant pressure calorimeters because the reactions are carried out at normal atmospheric pressure. That's 101 kilopascals. Most chemical reactions are performed in laboratories that are open to the atmosphere, and so pressure doesn't change during the chemical reaction. These reactions also take place in water, and the reactions have to be dissolved in water, and then that's added into our coffee cup. So this coffee cup right here I have cut out so you can kind of see inside and see that water that's in there. Now the cup can be just any sort of insulated container, and the insulated of the styrofoam here is going to retain the heat so nothing gets outside of this uh, container. When measuring the heat transferred during a chemical reaction, we're going to be concerned with if heat is going into or out of the system. And so with this calorimeter, the system is the actual chemical reaction. In other words, the chemicals that are reacting with each other, and the surroundings are the water that's around it. So for example, here's a chemical reaction that I could do inside of this calorimeter. I could take some hydrochloric acid, this would be dissolved in water, and some sodium hydroxide, that would be dissolved in water. And I would place those two things into the calorimeter and I'd let that react. Now the reaction itself, this stuff right here, that's what we call the system. And all of that water around that chemical reaction would be called the surroundings. And so what we would do with this calorimeter is we'd actually take a thermometer and we would stick that into our coffee cup. And if the temperature of the water increased, that means heat exited the system and it went into the surroundings. And if the water decreased, the temperature of the water decreased, that would mean heat went from the water, from the surroundings, and went into the system. So when we're performing a chemical reaction in a calorimeter, we want to calculate the amount of heat that is transferred. So heat is either going to go into the system or go out of the system. And what we're dealing with is actually enthalpy, delta H. We learned this in the previous video about enthalpy. This means the change in enthalpy of the system. Now this is literally going to be equal to the amount of heat in the system. And we use the letter Q to represent heat. And I'm just calling this heat of the system because that's going to be different from the heat of the surroundings. So the amount of heat that the system loses or gains is going to be equal to the change in enthalpy. Now the change in heat of the system is going to be opposite of the change in heat of the surroundings. So if heat is going into the surroundings, the water out here, the water is going to increase in temperature, which means the system would have to actually decrease in temperature. So we could say that the heat of the system is equal to the negative of the heat of the surroundings. So we're almost to the actual equation that we're going to use to calculate heat during this reaction in the calorimeter. We want to calculate the heat of the system. So we want to calculate this part right here. Now we can't directly calculate that because we're measuring the temperature change of the surroundings. So we're going to work with the surroundings here, but in turn calculate the heat of the system. Here so I can directly measure the heat of the surroundings. And to calculate the heat of the change of the surroundings, I'm going to take the mass of the water inside the container times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature. Now, since I really want to know the heat of the system, 
all I have to do is put a negative sign in front of all this stuff and I'll be able to calculate the heat change of the system and so this is the one right here that we want to work with and the specific heat of water this is a constant value it is 4.186 joules per gram degrees Celsius so that always is going to get plugged in there for C so really we're just measuring the mass and the change in temperature experimentally to calculate that heat change. Now there is one other type of calorimeter that is our constant volume calorimeter and this works a little bit differently the pressure can actually change because this reaction is done inside of a sealed container. This is normally uh, used to calculate the amount of energy inside food and so we're gonna have a combustion reaction which means we're basically gonna burn something inside of this sealed container and this container is actually called the bomb so that's where the name bomb calorimeter comes from uh, in the food industry they would take a sample of food and they would put it into this container here and they'd use this ignition box over here to actually spark and ignite that food it would light on fire and burn and the heat would transfer into this bomb container that would actually be made of metal and then in turn the heat would transfer into the water surrounding it and you would measure the temperature change of that water with your thermometer and in food science this is where the nutrition facts come from you've probably seen this on the side of a food package and right here calories is a measure of heat and so this is experimental data that's gathered when they take that type of food and they burn it in a bomb calorimeter and then they find out how many calories there are inside of that food. The reaction that we're going to do inside our calorimeter is the dissolving of calcium chloride. So I have solid calcium chloride, that's the solid stuff right here, and I'm going to dissolve that into 100 grams of water. First, I have to construct my calorimeter. Now I added a little bit of extra piece to my calorimeter. I took another cup and I cut it uh, down a little bit smaller and I put a hole through it. That way I can really hold in that heat and the holes for my thermometer to go into. So first thing I have to do is take the initial temperature of the water because I want to see how much the temperature is going to change. So I'm going to put that water into my calorimeter and I'm going to put the top on so I can hold in all that heat and then I'll just put in the thermometer. I'm going to wait a couple minutes for the temperature to kind of stabilize. Okay, it's been a couple minutes. The initial temperature of the water is about 21.5 degrees Celsius. Now I can go ahead and add the calcium chloride. And then I'm going to stir up the calcium chloride uh, just by swirling this around. You never want to stir it with a thermometer because you might break it. So I'm going to stir this up for a few minutes and then see how the temperature changed. Okay, that's about a minute of stirring. Let's take a look at the temperature now. We're at 26 degrees Celsius. So the temperature has increased from 21.5 to 26. Now we can go ahead and do the math and find out how much heat was released during this chemical reaction. Now here's all the data from that chemical reaction. The temperature increased from 21.5 degrees Celsius to 26. And so I'm gonna calculate the change in temperature. I take the final temperature, subtract from that the initial temperature. And so I end up with a change in temperature of 4.5 degrees Celsius. I also started with 100 grams of water, so there's the mass of water. And then this is a constant, this is a specific heat of water. So here's the equation that we use to calculate heat that we've already learned. Mass of water times specific heat of water times that change in temperature. So let's go ahead and plug in all the numbers. And so there was 1,881 joules of heat that was released during that chemical reaction. When we have a number that big, usually we like to convert that into kilojoules. So we divide that by 1,000 and we would get 1.881 kilojoules. So did you learn everything that was in this lesson? Well, if you did, you learned that calorimetry is the science of measuring heat. You learned that a calorimeter is a device used to measure heat during a chemical reaction. And you also learned the equation to calculate heat.